Hi everybody, Big Papa here. Let's cook a pork butt. Start with this beautiful Smithfield pork butt. I'm gonna show you a couple things. Number one, you've got the horn here, the bone, and then the most important thing in competition barbecue is the money muscle. And what we're looking for in a pork butt is a real thick money muscle, and we want a lot of marble. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna start standing the pork butt on end, and actually kind of almost an upcut, even though I'm really should, you think I'm gonna be going this way. Okay, see this? And I'm gonna go through here. When I go past this vein that you see here, you're gonna see where the money muscle really ends. Just getting that fat away from there. I come up here and just clean that up a little bit. Okay, now you see this? I still gotta go past here and create my money muscle. I'm still on an upward slice. Be very careful cutting towards yourself. Now I'm gonna start going down, see? I went down. And I picked up the seam, and I'm gonna come from this side. See this right here? It's gonna come and just gently clean it up. Trim this off, I'm gonna trim up here. Notice how I use all these upstrokes. Now what I'm doing is I'm getting rid of a lot of the fat, a lot of the styration, because what I want to happen is I want the rub to get there, I want the smoke on the meat. Anyway, so we have this top pretty much done. I'm gonna get rid of some of this fat here. Just gonna clean it up nice, like it's going to its homecoming. Okay, now this side, right here, this fat, underneath here is the bacon. When I'm doing pulled pork, I'll pull this fat cap back in there, these long strings of what we call bacon, and that's what we use for a pulled pork. So I'm gonna come down here, and I'm not gonna do very much, I'm just gonna take that edge off. This baby's done. Now you see, I got the money muscle here. Now I'm gonna inject it. We use pork prod that I developed because it's very, very savory. It has a very good pork flavor. If you don't have pork prod, you can use apple juice, water, a little Worcestershire. There's a lot of different combinations, but really, this is the best. What I'm gonna do is a half a cup for 16 ounces of water. These Nalgene bottles are very, very helpful out on tour and actually in the kitchen. So you see, I've got 16 ounces measured. I need a half a cup of the pork prod. Pork prod actually has rendered pork fat in it, so we're actually injecting some pork fat back into the pork butt. It also has a pork stock that I designed and, and dried, and I'm actually putting back in some flavor. So I'm gonna shake this up really good. This is about as close as you get to work out and barbecue. Now, if you're injecting at home, that's great. You can use a lot of different injections. Pork prod is not just competition, it's great at home. So I wanna come in here and with the injector, I'm gonna put it in and you pull it out gently as you're releasing it. So that disperses the injection into the pork butt good. Put in. Pull the trigger and release it. Now let's get back here in the bacon and get some under here. See how it's kind of bubbling up there? I don't mind that. Now comes the critical part on the money muscle. I'm gonna hold the money muscle up here and I'm gonna go right here at the end and I'm gonna be very careful how much I put in as I pull out. But you can feel it except the injection. It's really kind of beautiful. Okay, there you have it. We have a perfectly injected pork butt. Now we're going to use some sweet money. When I put the seasoning on the pork, the smaller ingredients are getting their real estate on the meat first. The salt will dissolve and it will create a dry brine or a salt cap over it and a great tenderizer. Salt is still one of the best tenderizers ever. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick this up and give it a nice good coat. Now in the old days of barbecue, a lot of people used mustard as glue, olive oil as glue, sometimes caro syrup as glue there's no need for glue because what we're gonna do is after we season this, we're gonna let it set until it sweats. And believe it or not, it will sweat. It'll become very shiny. It won't look granular. It'll look like you almost painted it. And that's when it's ready to go on the cooker. That's when it's ready to absorb the smoke. What you wanna do, you wanna get a uniform coating on this because that's gonna help create your bark. It's already starting to get shiny. So let's just let it sit here for a while. And when it's shining, we'll go out and visit the smoker. Okay, let's get this pork butt that I've trimmed, injected, and seasoned. Let's get it into the Old Hickory HPP. It's gonna be roommates with the brisket. Now you two behave. We'll be back in about two hours to foil that pork butt. I'm gonna show you when it's time to foil. I think it's time to foil. Look at that color. See, that's a beautiful color. From mahogany to a little darker. 
I'm going to uh, tempt this. I'm going to tempt it behind the money muscle. Now remember, this was a competition trim because we removed all the meat around the money muscle because the money muscle is the most tender piece on the pork button. I like about 155. Okay, we're going to foil this. Double wrap your foil, even if it's heavy duty foil, okay? Because your grill can have little burrs, it can drag on something, and the worst thing that can happen, you think it's brazing in these liquids, and you got a hole you didn't know about, and you lost all your liquid. So, double foil. What I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna take some brown sugar. Just kinda lightly coat it. I'm gonna take some honey. Now that looks good enough to eat right there. Then we're gonna take some happy ending. Okay, I like to put some of this finishing rub in at foil just to make sure that we keep a little barbecue flavor going with the honey and the sugar. We're gonna take a half a cup of apple juice. Now we're gonna tuck this up like this so we don't lose it. Getting all the air out of it. You know why? The tighter I get it, believe it, the more it steams. So now we're gonna come back in here. We'll be back in a couple hours. Okay, pretty close to done. So I'm gonna come back in and show you with this thermopen. See how that kind of just, I don't know if you can tell there's no effort at all. This is done. Now what we're gonna do, is we're gonna take this whole pan here and we're gonna put this pork butt here and it's got a lot of juice in here. And turn it sideways, take this towel. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap this up good in the towel. Try and do it so I don't ruin the towel. We're gonna let it rest for about two hours and then I'm gonna show you how to pull pork for a party. It's time to pull some pork. Let's take this towel off. Be very, very careful. These are my wife's towels and I've got to treat them with a lot of gingerly respect. Okay, here we go. Now we're gonna open this up. Look at this. Ooh. <laughs> Get one piece, here we go. Now let me see if it's done. Oh yeah, it's done, the bone came out. So we have that. Now I'm gonna keep this foil juice right here for a reason, okay? Because what we're going to use, we're going to use it to rehydrate the pork butt to get ready for pulling. God gave me these hands for many things, playing guitar, kung fu, and for pulling pork. Make sure you double glove for this, maybe triple glove, because it's pretty hot. It's starting to look pretty good, huh? I mean, really, if you don't like this, you're off the Christmas card list. Here we go. Now we're going to take some happy ending. I'm going to take some of this juice that I reserved, some of the pan fat and juices. And I'm going to fold it back in there because that's flavor. Let me just put a little bit of sauce in there. Not a lot. This is where the purists get upset because they don't think you should put any in it. But I'm not a purist. I like good food, so here we go. Put some granny sauce in there, some happy ending. That's really ready for some sandwiches. This will basically feed your family for about four days if you get real creative with the recipes because what you can use it for later is enchiladas. Mix it in with salsa. They're the most beautiful pulled pork tacos. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna serve it on the only bread I think you should, and that's white bread. Load the sandwich up here. I like it messy, okay? This is not something you do need. Here you have Big Papa's Smithfield Pulled Pork Sandwiches.